Hey everybody, David Chang here with The Art of Thinking Smart. Glad you can join us where we're going to learn to live smarter, think smarter, and make smarter decisions. And this week, I am excited to have as a guest Don Chapman, who's the former editor of Midweek. And actually, through Don, I got my start in journalism by writing a weekly article. Don, thank you so much for coming. Really excited for you to be here. Thank and you. and just to give a little background, I, I want you to kind of explain. You, know, you're, you were the former editor of a paper that you took from 300 to 500,000 readers, the largest weekly paper in the state of Hawaii, and uh, you actually started as a seminary student. So uh, can, can you explain a little bit about that, that jump uh, over there? Me and Frank, Frank DeLima have the same background. Oh, right? wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All we, right. We, we've, we've talked about that. Um, I, I, I'd written for papers in high school and college, and when it came time to quit the seminary for several reasons that are personal, um, I, I, a, a good uh, pal of mine uh, who I'd worked with in high school papers, and he, he got on to Oregon Journalism School, was, was working for the Philly Inquirer. And I said, well, I can do what he's doing. <laughs> and so I went back to Oregon to Journalism School, and, and that uh, started the process. Got it. So then, then you started working, you said, in California, and then moved here to Hawaii, 1979, has been writing ever since then. Uh, 13 years as a daily columnist at the Old Advertiser, and then uh, 22 years as the editor of Midweek until the 1st of August, and I'm now officially retired. Well, look, congratulations on that. <laughs> but, but I guess you can see you already have a lot of uh, different ideas from our other conversations. And so today's show, I want to talk about thinking smart when it comes to your career and what you've seen since you have become an editor of a, of a large paper, all the stories you've covered, all the people you've had to hire, just... You know, when I think of an editor in chief, I think of Chief Perry on Superman, <laughs> who's out there making decisions with all this stuff. I, um, before we go into the career advancement, could you little uh, tell us a little bit about, as an editor, what was your day to day? Uh, you know, the stories would pop up. How, how would you balance that out with events, current events? Uh, no two days are the same. <laughs> okay, got uh, it. Because th things change day to day. Uh, you could be working on a story that you're going to put put to bed on a Friday, which is a deadline day at mm -hmm. midweek. But something suddenly happens on a Wednesday, and we, well, well, we can get this this story in if we hustle. So so things are always changing, and and there's a story schedule, uh, but it's never written in stone. Got it, got it. And and, and I guess with all the writers that you have, press, uh, uh, that uh, you get the final say on the stories. Uh, um. More or less, I had a boss, uh, uh, right. Ron. Ron. Uh, right. Uh, but uh, it, 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 it was definitely a team. Got it, a, a team effort on that. And what would you say is one of the reasons why you were able to get the readership within your tenure it's so high? Our founding publisher, Ken Berry, had, had a great saying. He said, midweek should have as many common, common denominators as possible. Mm. And so you, you might only pick up the paper to read Bob Jones's column. You might only pick up the paper to get the ads. Got it. But, but we want you to look at something else along the way as well. Got it, got it. So I like that. So common denominators so that people are constantly the habit of, and that's, I think, a, a thinking smart tactic is that in our lives, looking at the common no denominators uh, of, of what we can do in, in working with other people. Now, so going into the career advancement portion, uh, it, so you've been editor for over two decades and you've started from the ground up. Um, and you talked about, you want to talk about six things that you think that even if you're mid-stage, early stage, or even maybe in retirement like yourself, the things that, that we need to do in today's society. And so if we could start with number one, what would you say is the first thing that people need to do for their career advancement? Education. Okay. Simple as that. Um, I, I, I look for people who, who were trained as journalists. That, that, that doesn't mean that we didn't have people who, who were just like an English major for, for but um, you, you look for someone who's had some kind of training professionally. Got it. In education, uh, schooling, you mean? So you, definitely you believe that in today's world, uh, getting higher degrees is essential yes. in today's market? Yes. Okay, yes. got it. And, and then so um, uh, after education, what would you say is the next one? Uh, um, experience, which is kind of a catch-22 if you're young, you're just coming out of college. Uh, the, the one thing I always told young journalists is, is write 
write for your college paper, write for your high school paper, mm. and and then you've got some clips that you can come uh, show, show to an editor. Oh, got it. So, uh, so how would you? Okay. So now, um, uh, let's just say somebody who's young doesn't have the experience yet. How would you encourage them to get experience? You talked about writing for a college paper. What if they're not in college? What would you say? How to kind of look, look in that direction? Um, I, a, a great, great example um, was uh, I was doing a book, book signing years ago at the old Borders out at uh, what you call White Kelly. And this young woman came to me and said, I want to write for you. And I said, you got any clips? And she goes, well, no, not really. I said, Come, come talk to me when you got some clips. It was about a year later I heard from her. She, she had been, been, been blogging, writing online, oh. and, and had some clips, and it was great stuff, and we hired her as a columnist. Okay, got it. Uh, you're talking about your book signing. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, so you publish your own books? And um, <laughs> I've had uh, two published locally by uh, what you call mutual publishing. Wow. Oh. Um, and then I published, I think, five or six on my own through Amazon. Okay, guys, so self-published books and regular books. What were the general topics of those? Oh, golly, it goes everything. Um, there was one that was uh, the story of Abraham, who I think is the most important person in the Bible because okay. he's, he's the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam yeah, through right, his two absolutely. sons. Yeah. Um, there was a um, historical novel on Alexander Cartwright, the father of baseball, who lived most of his life here. Oh, okay. And, 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 and it wasn't Doubleday, it was Cartwright. Uh, who, who was the father of baseball? Interesting. So I graduated from West Point, and Abner Doubleday graduated yes. from West Point. So they, they, so we are taught that the founder of baseball was a West Pointer, but you're saying it's Cartwright. So that's interesting. Yes. Okay, I, I, I want to definitely read about that. And and going off, the, you know, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the publishing side. Uh, do you uh, self-publishing is a lot more common nowadays? What what do you think of that versus? going through the traditional publishing route versus self-publishing? Um, there are arguments both ways. Um, this one, uh, this way, if, if you're self-publishing, you've got total, total control on the package. Got it. I am my own editor rather than a publishing house ed editing for me, and I've had a couple of bad experiences with that. Oh, I see. Um, the positive of going through a publishing house is they've got the marketing and mm. it, it, whereas now I've got to do my own marketing. Got it. And the publishing house, they own the rights to the book essentially, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. So you do have that pros and cons on that side. So okay, we've talked about um, education is important and even if, uh, what would you say to somebody who is maybe midlife crisis and they want a career change and especially with the millennials. You see the polls showing that millennials switching jobs every one to two years. How have you experienced that being an editor? And, and what, what do you recommend if they're saying, you know, I've been in the engineering or finance field. I want to jump into the journalism. Uh, how, how would you talk about that when it comes to education experiences? They don't have it. I know you talked about trying to write for it, but uh, what would you say on the career transition side? Well, I, I, I did that from the church school to right. journalism. So I would say just, just go for it. Just but go for it. Huh? Have, have a plan in mind, too. To just don't jump blindly. Okay, okay. What, what do you mean, like a plan? Uh, would you say? If, if you're in, uh, say, if you're an engineer and for some reason you think you're not making enough money, I can't imagine. <laughs> but you know what? You suddenly want to be a teacher. Got it. Something. Well, 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 then you've got to go get some education. Sure, sure. Uh, on a quick side note, what would you say makes a good journalist? Curiosity. Oh, okay. Curiosity. And, and it's that ability, I guess, to continue to just learn or to continue fact-find? And I, I was always aware that I wasn't telling my story. I, I was telling that person's story. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're telling an, a, a story of someone else and try to convey that to other people. Yes. Guy, and, uh, and I guess now I, I want to move on, but I'm curious to know, what would you say makes good writing? Because uh, you see so much out there online, blogs, um, and I actually probably spend hour to two hours a day combined reading different articles, blogs, all this kind of stuff. What would you say, would you say this is a good article or a good writer? Whether it's written or it's you telling me a story, it's a story. Mm. And, and, and it's good storytelling. Okay, got it. So that's, just, that's simple. Good writers are good storytellers. Yes. 
Got it. Okay. All right. So we like education experience. What would you say is a third one for career advancement? Positive outlook. Okay. Uh, and, and I couple that with a willingness to work. Okay. Um, we, we had several young people on, on the staff at Midweek uh, who were still there. Um, and we, we made it a very positive work environment. Okay. So, so it, it was a place that they wanted to be. Got it. And, and, and when you need positive outlook, you say, okay, positive work environment for the person itself. And I think it's kind of tough. Uh, would you say that they have to be pa obviously passionate about their work in order to have that outlook, but is it also outlook on their personal careers or their profession of choice? What would you, uh, how do you look for that positive outlook in somebody? That's a good question. And, and you're trying to do this in one or two job, exactly job right, right. Uh, interviews. Um, it, it just shows, David. I mean, the first time I met you, I'm sure. going, this is a positive guy. <laughs> got it. Okay. So it's your years of experience. You got that gut feel that somebody is passionate about what they yes. do. And, and uh, you know, obviously being editor for a long time, uh, have you had to let people go because you found out that they just didn't have the passion that you thought they had? I never had to fire anyone in that sense. We, wow. we were very lucky. We, we, we had some good hires. There was a couple of people who it became um, apparent to both them and us that this was not working out and they just found, found something else to do. Got it, got it, okay. So then uh, um, that positive outlook is important and you couple that with that willingness to work. And, and, uh, and, and team, teamwork again, it, okay. it, it, it comes back to that. If somebody's on vacation and then somebody gets sick and it's a relatively small staff, somebody's got to pitch in and, and, and and at, at the paper at midweek, uh, we were very lucky because everybody pitched in when they needed to. Got it. So just on a curious note, me being curious, when you first started, we didn't have computers like we had today. No. Can you think a couple of minutes? I, I'm just, I'm always, I always enjoy this. In the early 80s, how did you guys set the paper out versus today? <laughs> when I was at the advertiser writing, right. writing a daily column from 79 through, through 82, um, we typed on funny paper that would get scanned. Okay. And, and, and as I recall, this was a long time ago, <laughs> uh, it, it was like a duplicate thing. Okay. And at some point we had some rudimentary computers. This, this would have been in the early 80s, but, but early, early 80s, we were still typing on paper and scanning. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, we'll be right back. And thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be taking a short break. Aloha. I'm Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider, a weekly Thursday show at 3 o'clock that goes all summer long talking about issues living in a condo association. Each week we bring experts to talk about the rights and obligations of owners and boards of directors to successfully run their condominium. It's a great educational show, answers a lot of questions. We hope you'll visit us sometime. Aloha. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Hibachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. All right, so now I'm excited again to have Don Chapman here, the former editor of Midweek. And we've been talking about career advancement, whether you're starting off new or want to change careers. And we're seeing uh, a lot of the younger generations changing careers every two to three years, not sure if it's good or bad. But we've talked about so far five things out of the six. And the first one you're saying is education. And if you don't have it, get the education. Experience, and nowadays anyone could blog or right. write for other folks if they need to. We talked about positive outlook. Uh, we talked about teamwork. Um, and then uh, the fifth one was hard work. Hard work, right? Okay, so uh, that's important. So now let's look at the sixth one. What would you say is the next one needed that you look for and you also believe 
it's crucial for advancement. Volunteerism. Okay. Simple as that. Whether you're a little league coach or you're helping with a, a, a food drive or if it's some uh, professional um, group or, 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 or an ethnic group, um, volunteer some, somehow. I, I, I just did a story um, on two gentlemen who are architects. They, they put on the biggest trade show for mm -hmm. the construction industry here. Um, architects, and, and they've been doing this for the last 17 years. They, they said that it's been personally ful fulfilling and it has helped their careers. Okay, got it. And so, how, okay, what would you say to somebody? Uh, is it just to go down the list of nonprofits, volunteer? How, how would you encourage somebody to move along uh, 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 into that area? Um, that's something I'm going through now, David, because okay. I've got time time on my hands. <laughs> right. um, I do some volunteering now, working with the student newspaper at uh, what you call Moanalua High School. Oh, wow, okay. uh, This is the third year I've been doing that. But I, I do have some time, and I'd like to be on a board, so I'm starting to look around at things that, that interest me. Okay. Well, what are things that interest you? Uh, things that have to do with children and education, um, if, if it benefits kids some, somehow. Okay. And what, in, in your line of work, and this is something that I read somewhere that... Uh, the newspaper is written that uh, a third or fourth grader is able to read, right? So you have your uh, uh, your journals and everything. Um, in, in your opinion, volunteering at these schools, uh, how, are, are our kids set up for success in the future? Um, the kids that I'm dealing with are so smart. Oh, that's great. Um, and every time I leave the school, I go, well, that was fun. <laughs> right, right, and, 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 and so I'm there to teach them, but, but at the same time, I'm learning from them. Mm, interesting. And so when you teach journalism, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, okay, you got your normal grammar, your, your normal, but you're teaching them to tell a story, like you mentioned, correct? And to um, identify a story. What, what is a good story? Okay, what, what is a good story? Uh, yes, perfect. Um, what interests you? Okay. And, 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 and if you're, as a writer, interested in the story, you, you've got a much better chance of making it, it, it readable and interesting to oh. a, a, a reader. Got it. So you identify the story by what interests you. What else uh, do you teach uh, you know, students uh, to become journalists or good writers for that? Oh, matter? oh my God, at this level, I, I just <laughs> spell the names right. right, right, right. It's the one thing I tell them. We, we, we each have one thing that's our name and, and get, get that right. Details. Mm. Um, and, 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 and we talk about active writing, not just um, a, a ball hits you in the head, okay. but, um, you, but, but, but tell it more actively. Okay, so active voice versus passive voice. Yes, exactly. And, and for those that are listening, uh, it, it, you could Google it if you have questions on what yeah. that is too. Yeah. Uh, in the military, we're actually taught not to use passive voice because people think that they sound smarter when they do that. Uh, but you're right. I, I think that's important. I, I, and so I really like it. So education, experience, uh, the positive outlook, teamwork, hard work, um, and, and, and volunteerism. Uh, I want to talk about the teamwork. How are the dynamics in a newsroom? Uh, you know, in your mind, you see on TV, everyone's moving quickly because they got to meet these deadlines. But when I went to visit your office, it seemed like everything was running very smoothly. People were on top of it. Uh, how, how, how were the dynamics that you created, the company culture? Um, first, I would say that the midweek office is rather different than the daily paper office okay. uh, because they're cranking out a paper every single day. Right. In a sense, we were too because there was midweek, there was midweek Kauai. Mm. We, we did four neighborhood papers uh, called The Voice. Um, and so it was almost a daily operation in the sense that we're do, doing a publication just, just about daily. Um, organization. Mm. You, you've got to be organized and planned. Oh, got it. And and a plan B all the time. Got it. Because stories can fall through. Okay. I, I, so so I, you have a story lined up with the source. And, and I got a question on that because you always hear, okay, hey, there's a whistleblower and there's going to be uh, the source. What does the law say? I, I'm just curious. Can you reveal your sources or, or have you ever been in that situation? Uh, sure. A and it's pretty well spelled out. Um, if a person comes to me and says that a crime was committed against them, right. 
I, I, I'm, I'm just not going to write that. Okay. First, first, I've got to go to the police and file a, a uh, cop report, and then we report on that. Ah, oh, I see, I see. So you have to make sure it's vetted through before it actually gets to you guys. Yes. So one of the questions I want to ask, and I think this is a debate that I've heard now with the invention of the iPad, uh, the digital tablets versus hard copy, and we've had a lot of newspapers the past, you know, since the Great Recession go belly up. and, and, and what do you think the future is? And if you were 30 years younger, uh, would you still be in the same industry? Uh, and if you were, what would you look at uh, future success? Um, every year, the UH journalism kids take a, a tour of our, our, our office of the daily paper. And, and the one thing I always told them was the world is always going to need somebody who can tell, tell a story well, who can dig out the facts, who can present it. So whether the format is a paper or if it's on a tablet, uh, uh, those skills will, will, will always be valued. Um, one, one interesting thing, David, Jay, Jay Hartwell, who is the faculty advisor at the UH student paper, Kaleo, mm -hmm. Uh, there was a national study done a couple of years ago that he shared with me, and college students had found out that they might, might have phones and tablets and this and that, but right. when it comes to their own school <laughs> paper, they want to hold the paper. Right, right, right. I, I, right. I like holding books. I read a lot, I like one, one or two books a week. That's my goal. A lot of it through Audible, a lot of it through Kindle, tablet, but you're right. When I can just feel the, the paper, I could uh, write notes on the side or highlight. Yes. I, I, I definitely agree. And, and so for you, you talked about curiosity being very, very important. Oh, yeah. uh, where do you go to do your research or, I know we could all just Google it, but as a journalist, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, just Googling it wouldn't, wouldn't suffice. How would you tell a good journalist to say, this is, the, you, this is how far research and details you need to go into? Googling is great. You can find a ton of stuff in like that, uh, but but it's people. You need okay. to talk to people. Okay, and that's where part of being a people person you say is important. Then uh, one of my ideas for a midweek story in the 22 years that I was there was that we might be writing about politics, we might be writing about business, we might be writing about sports, but it's always a people story. Mm, got it. So a, a people story. What would you say was your most favorite? maybe me most memorable moments at, at midweek, stories you've written or, 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 or the moments that you had there? A couple come to mind at, at, at first, and the first one really put midweek on the map because it was kind of a little shopper uh, when I became the editor in 94. January 95, I flew over to the Big Island and interviewed Larry Mayhow, okay. a okay. name that means a lot to many people. Sure. Um, in, in fact, I, I ended up doing 16 hours of one one on one with Larry. I, I was the only print media guy that he ever trusted. Oh. So he passed last winter. I'm now in negotiations with his family to do a book on Larry. Wow. Okay. Um, so sort of the other end of the spectrum, and Larry was a great guy. Um, and the stuff they said about him is not true. Okay? <laughs> most of it. Most of it. Uh, and and on the other end, it would be the Dalai Lama. Wow. Uh, who I've gotten to cover several times. Uh, his last visit here, I think that was in 2012, he actually shook my hand twice. Wow, that's, that's great. So, so. You've got to write a story about him. And, and how often, because you, know, uh, you know, I used to write for you, you have multiple writers. How often would you actually write a story in midweek? In the early days, I was writing everything. I would okay. write a cover story and a column and a newsmaker and an old friend feature. Uh, in more recent years, I became more of a manager and was just writing when I had something to say, basically. Oh, God. Would you read every article? Oh, yes. So, so you're, you're looking for typos, grammar, all that type of stuff, and for content? Every story. Every story. I would, I would laugh some, sometimes. I'd uh, get a call from an angry reader. Did you read this? I said, yeah, I, yeah, I did. <laughs> Actually, twice. <laughs> what, what would you say are the, the uh, memorable articles that you got the most response from people on? Bob Jones. Okay, <laughs> all right. Bob Jones is... Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, politics. Obviously. Politics, always politics. And, and, and the thing that I used to laugh about, 
people would say, you're a Republican paper, and other people would say, you're a Democratic paper, <laughs> often in the same day with the same, same issue. I, well, thank you very much. So I know that uh, you had local writers and then uh, syndicate, I guess. Right. How does that uh, work? Uh, the syndicated guys are great for papers because we, we may pay like 10, 10 bucks a column. Oh, wow, I see. For a Patrick Buchanan column. Okay. But, but, but if he's in 400 papers. Yeah, yeah, I see. That's, so that's how he makes his money. Yeah. And, and so that's another way somebody can get uh, uh, career advancement is really just through networking and just kind of finding out other small papers. You're in Hawaii, but you can still write for a probably small paper in another state yes. given today's technology then. Yes, exactly. Interesting. And, and so kind of coming back and just summarizing it, uh, we see that right education is important. And uh, and does a degree now? Let's just say that they did have a degree, but you can see they've got the experience, or they are able to uh, uh, write well, tell a good story. Um, wh what would you still say to that? Uh, would you still encourage them to go back to school? Uh, some kind of continuing education. It may not be a formal classroom, but 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 to keep educating, and it just could could be reading. Got it. You are a prime example of that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Just continue to self-educate and, and then continue to get uh, uh, degrees. And thankfully, online degrees are readily available and, some, yeah. uh, and, and even our major schools are doing it. So then we talked about education, we talked about experience and trying to get experience anywhere. And I, I guess you're saying have a portfolio of your work Absolutely. so you can hand, hand to people. How would you say to to reach out to somebody? You, you mentioned you were writing a book and someone came to you and says, hey, I wanted to uh, write for you. Would you recommend people just cold call or cold email an editor? How would you say they should approach people like you when you were the editor? Yes, uh, don't, don't be shy. Mm, okay, This don't is be no shy. time to be shy. Got it, don't be afraid of rejection. Uh, you, just, you will be rejected. Okay. So you will, you know when you're going to be rejected, the more time, just like sales, it's not about how many times you get no, it's how many times you go out there and get those yeses. So just encourage them to not be shy in everything. Then we talked about hard work, uh, teamwork, a positive outlook, and then volunteering. And, and kind of what I see on the volunteer side, you're talking about have adding value, I guess, to society not just trying to take something from somebody or some organization. But, but I think any person that you know who does any kind of volunteer work will tell you that they get more out of it than they give. Got it, got it. And, and I had a mentor tell me, because uh, there's so many organizations you could join, don't join an organization just to see what you can get out of it, but make sure yes. that it's an organization that you want to be able to add value to, to help, and then things kind of like a domino effect will, uh, uh, don't, don't go in there looking for something, but what you can provide and give. Something that you believe in. Got it. Well, hey, Don, thanks so much. Appreciate David, it. Really it's excited. Nice. And I, again, are very uh, honored that uh, we had Don Chapman, editor, former editor of Midweek here. And I look forward to seeing you on our next show.